Hey there, I'm James, host of Dakota Spotlight. We're back with a new season, You Killed Chris, A Friend's Fight for Justice. It's a chilling throwback to 1968. A college freshman, Christine Rothschild, is murdered on campus during her morning walk. Join us as we dive into this unsolved case and follow a friend's relentless pursuit of the truth, all the way from the flower power era to today. Binge You Killed Chris on your favorite app or at dakotaspotlight.com. Angie has made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your jobs projects done well. If you own a home, you know how much work it can take, whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality. It can be hard just to know where to start, but now all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise you need. Angie has over 20 years of home service experience, and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app, answer a few questions, and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly which means you can take care of just about any home project in just a few taps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. This podcast is sponsored by Ramp. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. With Ramp, you get full visibility into your company's spending and control who spends what with each vendor. Ramp software collects and verifies receipts instantly to save your team valuable time. Ramp automates data entry and routine tasks with automated approvals, expense categorization and bill payments, time-consuming tasks which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. Get $250 when you join Ramp for free. Just go to ramp.com slash easy. Ramp.com slash easy. R-A-M-P dot com slash easy. Currents issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. A Milk Carton Mystery. I'm Rebecca Lieb. I'm Jason Horton. And this is Ghost Town. In the early 1980s, a unique initiative captured the attention of the American public and brought a spotlight to a tragic issue, the disappearance of children. This initiative involved printing the faces of missing children on milk cartons, a move that turned an everyday grocery item into a tool for social awareness and search efforts. However, despite millions of milk cartons, very few success stories were the result. I remember growing up, pictures of children on milk cartons. It is mm-hmm. a very 1980s yes. thing. And it was one of those things that had found its way into television. Mm-hmm. I think an episode of Small Wonder and maybe an episode of Different Strokes. It, it almost became a culturally iconic thing. And I always wondered, I was like, how successful was it? Mm-hmm. And it turns out, not very. Not very, yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I remember of- it being very low, the percentage. But I, I do think it is part of that time and place in history where – it was like stranger danger panic. And I think it culturally, I think it made people a lot more aware. So I get that's kind of an amorphous positive of it because certainly, yeah, like you said, like it's a very small percentage of kids actually being found. But again, it, it did kind of raise awareness in a way. The idea of featuring missing children on milk cartons began in the Midwest. It was inspired by a high profile case of Aton Pats, a six year old who vanished on his way to school. In New York City, 1979, that's a pretty famous Mm -hmm. missing child case. His disappearance shocked the nation and marked a significant turning point in how child abductions were perceived and handled. We have people who talk about the 70s and 80s, and they're like, we all came home when the light was, the street light was on. Mm -hmm. Like, we're, you know, latchkey kids. We survived, but a lot of people didn't. There was a lot of child abductions. So people talk about this stuff. It's like, we were tougher back then. I was like, but you were not abducted. No, yeah. It's just a very Gen X boomery thing mm-hmm. to say. The first missing child to appear in a milk carton was Johnny Gotch, 
a 12-year-old paperboy who disappeared in West Des Moines, Iowa in 1982. His face appeared on milk cartons distributed by the Anderson Erickson Dairy, sparking nationwide interest. A good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Shortly after, Eugene Martin, another Iowa paperboy, also went missing and was featured on milk cartons. These early cases set the stage for a broader campaign. In 1984, the National Child Safety Council launched a national campaign to place the photographs of missing children on milk cartons. This effort was bolstered by the support of the dairy industry, which recognized the potential of this grassroots movement. Milk cartons were ubiquitous in the American home, ensuring the faces of missing children would be seen by millions of people every single day. If you're wondering, is an an altruistic move by the dairy industry? No. No. (laughs) No. No, no, no. The dairy industry and government have always been in each other's purviews. But I'm sure at least it it, it potentially raised awareness. Yeah. And I'm sure they thought maybe it would actively help. Yeah, at least this might help somebody. One of the most iconic cases during this period was that of Jacob Wetterling. Very high profile when you're discussing missing children, especially in the late 1970s and 1980s. An 11-year-old boy from St. Joseph, Minnesota, who was abducted in 1989, his image was featured on milk cartons across the country, bringing widespread attention for his case. Now, there is one very interesting case, one success of this, which is atypical of a child abduction, and we're going to discuss that right after this break. Angie has made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your jobs projects done well. If you own a home, you know how much work it can take, whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality. It can be hard just to know where to start, but now all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise you need. Angie has over 20 years of home service experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app, answer a few questions, and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly, which means you can take care of just about any home project in just a few taps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. Hi. Hello. How are you? How are you doing? How's it going out there? We're checking in. This is the check-in. A little quickie check-in. How are you? a little one for you. That little quickie? You want a quickie? A little snack? Yeah. A little little, uh, afternoon delight whenever you're listening to this? this, Yeah. Hmm? What what a... That's going to be the worst way to have... The middle of your day. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. But also in the morning's not a great way to start it, and it's not a great way to end no. it. So when? Well, maybe on your, on your fun. horrible commute. <laughs> oh, horrible commute. That's what oh, okay. Gonna, yeah, yeah, horrible yeah, yeah. commute. Yeah, cool. That's when, that's when you should be doing this. Excellent. We want to say hello to anyone who's listening, supporting us, spreading the good word of Ghost Town. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Especially our government. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The mayors are actually proprietors of some beverage dynasties of days gone by. Ooh. Ooh, you don't say. Yeah. They're proprietors of beverage Just dynasties of day- days gone by. Okay, so they work. They're they're heads of defunct beverage yes, places. Yes, and they still they still name drop them As in conversation. Should. Yeah, they're just like, do you know who I used to be? It's a lot of that. Orbits man. Yeah. <laughs> this mayor said, "Hey, you like Pepsi? You like the morning?" How about a Pepsi AM, which Ooh, we have done an episode on? We have done on. an episode on that, absolutely. Yes. If you want soda that you are allowed to legally drink in the morning. <laughs> legally. Yes. They won't arrest you if you drink this soda in the morning. Yes. You will not be breaking the law. Mm-hmm. You're going to want to go to Cat Joselle. Hello. This mayor was like, you want caffeine? You want your head to explode? How about you tear into a jolt? Oh, jolt cola. Classic. It's like, oh, yeah, I need to have a jolt. Tasted horrible. Oh, my God. I feel like it was like a tinny it sweet was, tart. It was, yeah, it was like very, it was hard, but it was cool packaging. Yeah. It was just like, hey, you want your heart to stop? It's a real jolt, it, it, medically a, speaking. It, it, medically speaking. Mm-hmm. Well, don't be lame. Come on. You got, pretty much got bullied into drinking it. Yeah. That was our mayor's tactic. And that mayor, Ashley Matson. Hello. This mayor was like, it's the 1970s. You want to stay slim? You want to be a bleach blonde? You're, you're someone on the go? 
crack open a tab. Ooh. Drink nine of them and lose yeah. your freaking mind. Exactly. Although tabs still exist, don't yeah, they? Yeah, but not in this way. Not, not in this, in this way. like feathered hair way. Not this in is this a feathered way. hair this different way. This is a vibe. Way. It's not about the product. No, this is the 70s mm-hmm. vibe. It's totally diety. Different. <laughs> it's so diety. <laughs> and you can definitely drink in the morning on the way to your oh, commute yeah. to be when you're a secretary. Because it's a cola. It's right? a cola. I, I don't think I've ever had a tab, but it's oh, yeah. it's like a watered cola. My grandpa watery my grandmother cola? Used to loved it. It was a horrible. Mm. <laughs> well, you can thank Kelly Meehan. <laughs> Hello. This mayor was like, huh, you want something fruity? It's the 90s, baby. Get something funky. How about a Fruitopia? Ooh. Remember Fruitopia? Are you kidding me? Of course. I mean, I remember the commercials so well. I think Sail Away. I think Enya was involved in the Fruitopia yeah. commercial, maybe. It was such it was a like vibe. Kaleidoscopic. It's like the 90s is a throwback to the 70s, man. Yeah, it's exactly. like psychedelic. Drink some psychedelia. Drink this battery acid juice. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be our mayor. Casey Weber. Hello. This mayor thought, I got the problem Mm -mm. solved in the 80s. Mm. Iconic, famous, infamous. He was like, Coca-Cola? It's been around since the 1800s. People love it. I got an idea. How about scrap it and just do a brand new version of it that nobody asked for? Nobody wanted. Nobody wanted. They like Coke and they're like, how did I slap the word new in front of it? Mm -hmm. And people were like... We Why? are losing our minds. <laughs> Why we would you do this? We are addicted to this product yes. that you sell us. He's like, but we want to make new money with new Coke. And they're like, you don't want my old money with and the old Coke? Who stood by it? Still stands by it? Our mayor, Matthew Clemens Larray. You like Pepsi? Ooh. But what if it's crystal clear? Yeah. Ooh. You really liked it the way it was, uh-huh. but what if it looked different? What if it looks like a lo- lemon lime yeah. soda, but, yeah, but it doesn't taste it like doesn't it taste at all? It doesn't taste like that. It's weird. And uh, nobody asked for it. No, everyone's worried about their teeth. I guess, yeah. Whitening. It's like, this is healthier. You were like, uh, yeah. your teeth will be okay uh, now. Yes. And we're all like, no, they won't be. <laughs> yeah, it's still <laughs> Sugar. battery acid. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's Crystal Pepsi. Courtesy of our mayor, Marissa Rothermill. Hello. And our mm. governor. She was like, water, it's free, but what if it costs money? Mm. What if we took something that was free and put it in a bottle? To waste and, the environment, environment away. Yeah. And then also have Coca-Cola attached to it and just have filtered toilet water but in a cool bottle. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, why don't we make that happen? Ooh, Ooh big Dasani, Ooh. big Coca Cola. Still exists. Still exists. Still exists. People still buying it. Airports all over the globe. Who is making that happen day in and day out Mm-mm. and does not care? Mm-mm. Won't won't drink it herself. Mm-mm. Knows better. She never would. <laughs> never but ever she'll would. Sell it to you, <laughs> shills. <laughs> you little, little nothings. <laughs> Look at you little nothings down there. You're crawling around like rats. Disgusting. <laughs> that is our governor, Avian, Avian Noble. Noble. If you want no ads, no chit chat, bonus episodes, seven days free. Just the good stuff. Head on over to patreon.com slash ghost town pod. Now let's go back to a positive Great. of this milk carton. And the case of Bonnie Loman, who was the little girl who saw her own face on a milk carton. Wow. She essentially, along with the milk carton initiative, solved her own case. Bonnie Loman was abducted from her father at age three by her mother and stepfather. So it was oh. a it was an atypical kidnapping, mm-hmm. which adds its own level of difficulty as far as is it really kidnapping are the channels of trying to recover your missing child not important in when it comes to the hierarchy of what's important it's like well your wife took her and you guys probably had a squabble this isn't important to us however her father managed to get her photo on the milk carton so she was living in spain as well as hawaii with her mother and her stepfather Makes it seem like they were moving around a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those so, are two pretty disparate places. So when she was growing up, she was not allowed to roam around. They knew that she was mm-hmm. kidnapped. Yeah. They weren't like, hey, we did the right thing. Go do what you want. Yeah. But as she grew older, she got more freedom as they figured like, oh, time has passed. Now she's seven. So four mm-hmm. years have passed and they're just kind of like, you know what? We're good. Yeah. We're safe. Dad doesn't care maybe. Or we got people off our us. backs. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she was at the grocery store with her stepdad and she stumbled upon a milk carton with her face on it. Her stepfather bought the milk carton and let her cut out the photo of her on it 
just to be like, oh, I'm on a milk carton. She doesn't know what's ha- like. She doesn't know what she she doesn't know. But she's hey, seven. I mean, like, I, I think there's a, a thing of that, but also, I'm sure she's been lied to her entire life. She's been gaslit and lied mm-hmm. to, mm-hmm. and doesn't understand the nuance of like, oh, this is part of the milk carton initiative of missing mm-hmm. children. But is yeah, but even still, like, I, I would love to know what the explanation was. So they cut it out, and they're like, oh yeah, they just you know could have said anything. Hey, we used your. They think you're so cool, and well, they want to use the merit milk thing, carton. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. So they allowed her to cut out and keep it, and she, you know it was under the under the you know the rule that it's it's hidden. It's just for you. Don't mm-hmm. go showing it around. She had a box of toys, and she mm-hmm. left it in there by accident, and left it over a friend's house. Uh-oh. Parents found it, looked at it, and it says this is a missing child. But and it's very even if it's cut out of a milk carton, you it's know, instantly rec- you can see the the card stock, you yeah. know, the printing. We can all see it in our head right now. And then she was reunited with her father. So That's that was amazing. one really good case. That's wonderful. The milk carton campaign had a significant impact on public awareness of missing children. It brought national attention to individual cases and fostered a sense of community involving the search for missing kids. The faces on the carton served as a daily reminder of the ongoing crisis of child abductions and the need for vigilance. However, the campaign faced challenges. The effectiveness was difficult to measure. It really shouldn't be difficult to measure. It's just like how many faces do we put out there and how many children were found. Yeah. It was hard to determine how many children were found as a direct result of the milk carton images. I don't know why that's diff- – if there's a database in, even in the 80s of that. and Yeah. Or like was a case close to being solved and actively investigated uh, and they also just so happened to be on the milk carton. Also, there's, I think there's a case of people that are uh, runaways too. Yeah. That's, that's fair because they were up to teenagers if yeah, I recall. Yeah. There's – nuance with Mm -hmm. that there were concerns with the potential psychological impact of families and communities constantly confronted with images of missing children Mm -hmm. seeing your own missing children in there seeing other missing children you're thinking you know there's just essentially it's a downer i guess it's a downer for the lack of result that it's bringing the biggest benefit seems to be the tax breaks Mm. the dairy companies would get Interesting. Not to say they wouldn't, des- I'm saying they wouldn't deserve no, them. No, it's a good thing. It it's is a, a good thing. Empirically good. But the tax breaks uh, do not hinge on the effectiveness of it. Yeah. If they could have their way, they'd be like, yeah, it, it could be a, a hundred year uh, campaign as long as we're still getting tax breaks. Mm-hmm. In the early 1990s, the campaign began to decline. Advances in technology, changes in media. The advent of the internet and the creation of the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children provided new avenues for getting information about missing children, use of websites. The Amber Alert is the next phase in that, which came out in 1996. And we still use today. And it is much more effective. I don't know what the statistic is, but I know that it obviously it's a higher progression for this because we're still using it. And it's something that we have much more access to. Um, because of our phones. Also, the, something that's somewhat similar is would be a television show like Unsolved Mysteries. Yeah. Which, in the more recent Netflix ones, mm-hmm. not so much, it seems. No, but the old ones. Old ones seem to really, and we talk yeah. about a lot of cases where people are eventually, they're shown on that, and they're like, wait, I know that person. Absolutely. And again, working in true crime, I can't tell you how many stories I find where really like one of the last acts is someone, some random person watching TV, seeing on America's Most Wanted, Unsolved Mysteries, yeah. and being like, I know that person. I'm going to call that a hotline. But even now, like a show like Unsolved Mysteries, I don't think as many people are consuming television mm-hmm. in the way, even like Unsolved Mysteries now is yeah. on Netflix. And that is you know a great way to do it, but it isn't that like syndicated thing where yeah. like, I'm sure there's certain demographics that watch it, but in generally that's changing too. So mm-hmm. that might become less effective depending on how you're consuming something like that. Yeah, absolutely. And then also, milk and cartons was changing. It turned into milk and jugs. If exactly. you look now, you don't really... I mean, you do see some, but it seems that, that changed. So mm-hmm. how it was ending up on, on the kitchen tables had also changed. Mm-hmm. While the milk carton campaign may no longer be in use, its legacy endures. Angie has made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your jobs projects done well. If you own a home, you know how much work it can take, whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality. It can be hard just to know where to start, but now all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise you need. Angie has over 20 years of home service experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. 
Bring them your project online or with the Angie app, answer a few questions, and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly, which means you can take care of just about any home project in just a few taps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com.